It's cool, and we've had some rain at the Daytona International Speedway in Florida, but the crowd is here just the same, almost 100,000 strong, ready and waiting for the start of the 1973 Daytona 500. This is the classic for the stock car set, only 14 years old, but already established as one of America's three great races, along with the Indianapolis 500 and the Grand Prix of the United States. The top drivers are here, of course. The good old Southern boys, like Richard Petty, the king of the stockers, who has updated his image this season with a brand new Fu Manchu mustache. Elsie Wiley Baker Jr., known as Buddy, sitting on the pole today, all six feet five inches of him. Cale Yarborough, the recently elected county supervisor of Timmonsville, South Carolina, is on the comeback trail with a most competitive car. The defending champion, though, is a visitor from the Indianapolis car circuit, tough, talented A.J. Foyt, perhaps the best American driver of his time. And Pete Hamilton of Maine, a Yankee among rebels, running his own operation this season and sitting on the first row at the start. Back in the pack at the start, but perhaps not at the finish, will be David Pearson. We'll be watching his progress through the pack in the early going. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay speaking to you from Daytona. Let's bring you in right now our new resident expert on the sport of motor racing, world champion race driver Jackie Stewart of Scotland. Jack, welcome, and uh, it's really good to have you with us. Well, thank you very much, Jim. It's nice to be in Florida, even though it's just a little bit cold, a little bit windy, and probably a little bit damp as well. It's a lot different than Formula One motor racing, but uh, it's very spectacular. They've got a big crowd, and I think we're going to see very exciting racing. What do you look for in the race? Well, I think experience as much as anything else. I think to win the Daytona 500, you've got to have some winning experience. And I think perhaps that what might be a slight drawback to Buddy Baker in pole position. I think the Petties, the Allisons, the, the Pearsons, uh, these sort of drivers, even Kyle Yarbrough, who's coming back, as you say, on a, on a trail that's successful. I think they are going to be the drivers because of their pit crews, because of their preparation, and because of their driver knowledge of being up front, because that's very difficult in motor racing to lead a race and to finally get there at the end. Okay, Jack. Now let's check in with our other motor racing expert down in the pit area, the editor of National Speed Sport News, Chris Economaki. The cars have left the pit area and are on the track circulating slowly behind the pace car here at the Daytona International Speedway because of the rain this morning which has left the track wet. The cars will circulate until such time as the track is dry enough for safe racing. The pace car will drop back and they'll talk as they ride with the drivers of the two front row cars to get an approval from them both before the green flag comes down. This may be a few laps, it may be many laps. Meanwhile, developments here at Daytona focus on the pole car, the number 71 k, &K Dodge driven by Buddy Baker. In last night's last practice session before the race, where the car had shown blazing speed in qualifying with a special engine, with its race engine it has gone even faster, making him clearly the favorite for victory in today's 500 mile classic. As Chris mentioned, the cars are moving under the yellow, primarily to help dry out the track, but the laps they're running will count in the race. There's no passing now, of course. Let's take a graphic look at the racetrack now with Jackie Stewart. So after leaving the start-finishing line, we go into turn one, where you're entering turn one at a speed of around 185 miles an hour. And this is the first time they get into the banking, which is a completely flat banking at 31 degrees on the turns. As they go in there, they can more or less choose the height that they want to travel. The car gets through there as slick as they can make it go through without scrubbing off a great amount of speed. In turn two, it's perhaps one of the most important turns in the racetrack, because if you make a mess in turn two, you're going to affect your straightaway speed on your main back straightaway. Turn three enters a little bit faster than turn one because there they've got a long straight beforehand and they'll go in there just a shade faster, around 186 miles an hour. But if they've drafted on the main straightaway, which of course is the big thing here at Daytona, they could be approaching at speeds in just excess of 190 miles an hour. Turn four, a difficult turn, because in the exit of turn four is perhaps one of the most difficult things on this speedway, a very difficult bump. A car that's going loose before it gets to that bump will undoubtedly break loose when it hits it. A car can bottom out on this bump, it can upset a car completely and of course a driver. So the drivers treat turn four with great reserve and caution. There you have it from Jackie Stewart, a quick look at this most visible 
beautifully designed racetrack. You can see the whole two and a half miles from just about any seat in the stands. But here comes the field, the pace car pulling off the track. They've run 11 laps under the yellow. This will be the 12th, but it looks like they're going to get the green. Buddy Baker on the pole, Pete Hamilton right alongside of him as they lead the rest of the field. Okay, here we go. And it's Buddy Baker going into turn one in first place. Buddy Baker, the pole sitter, has the lead at this moment. Twelve laps have gone by in the race, remember, and that is Cale Yarborough moving quickly into second place. They've broken away, Jim, which is something a little bit. I think Buddy Baker, the fact that he's been going a little harder out there than the rest of them on the basis of uh, heating his tyres up, so this has probably helped him a little bit. Looks like a pass. He's coming through. No, he hasn't made it yet. So it's Buddy Baker, the leader, but Cale Yarborough, somewhat surprisingly, from the second row, latching right onto him, and the two of them pulling away from the pack a little bit more than we would have expected here in the early going. Well... Kale's car has a little bit more torque, Jim, and I think this has probably helped it at this particular time. He really is pushing Buddy all the same. Pete Hamilton is in third place, and Kuku Marlin is fourth right now. And there you see the interval between the leaders and the third place car. That's Pete Hamilton in third, Kuku Marlin just behind him. But up on front, Buddy Baker and Kale Yarborough. If they can keep up this break, it could be a very good thing for both of them, Jim. I think... Uh, Kale's going to try and pull out again. He's trying very hard. It seems he's... I think he's made it this time, Jim. He's going in. Two turn three. No, I think Buddy's on top again. He yes, seems he to is. find the air a little bit easier up there, and I think the particular shape of his car, Jim, is significant in this whole race. And I think we might see something of this throughout the race if Kale can hold close. Kale Yarborough was one of the great names in stock car racing. Then for a couple of years, he went to the USAC, Indianapolis car circuit. Did not do too well, and now is back in business with NASCAR. Boy, he'd really like to win this one. I think he's opened up a bigger gap than they thought there were going to be in this stage. This is very surprising to me, but I think it's going to be easier for Buddy Baker to stay ahead, Jim, than uh, it is going to be for Kale Yarbrough to pass and get out front of Buddy. Buddy seems to have more steam and have a better shape. Here we see some racing uh, back in the pack for third place. That couldn't be third. That's number 28, Gordon Johncock, moving up through the field. And there is Pete Hamilton. Yes, he has caught Pete Hamilton for third. There's Richard Petty getting into it. And in car 43, A.J. Foyt just behind him in car number 50. So this is the race for third place. It looks like Petty's making his move pretty fast. He's coming through pretty strong and living it very high, Jim. He's, he's holding it high all the way around the course. So we really have two battles going on right now. A two-car battle for the lead and about a five-car battle for third place. It's still Gordon John Cobb, yeah, third Petty's number moved 28. Up. Richard Petty is in fourth place. I think Petty's going to try and get up. I don't think he likes the idea of this breakaway by Buddy Baker and Kale Yarbrough. He doesn't like this big gap because this isn't going to help in the drafting. If they don't keep this up, it could be it would be difficult for him to make up that gap. And, of course, the main thing here always in NASCAR is to stay on the same lap with the leaders because when the yellow flag comes out, they tighten up the field again. And that should happen a couple of times at least in a race like this. Richard really is living high up there. He's holding a higher line than any of the other cars, Jim. There he's going to make his move right past now. Here he comes. He's got past underneath. Great racing in the early going in the Daytona 500. In first place, Buddy Baker. Second place, Cale Yarborough. But moving out and soon in contact with him, perhaps, number 43, Richard Petty. We'll be back in a minute. We return to the Daytona 500, and look who's in action. Number 50 is A.J. Foyt. He's trying to pass Gordon Johncock, one of his colleagues from the USAC circuit, and get into this battle for victory. Richard Petty up in front just went out of the picture. He's in third place. And another gap up ahead are the co-leaders, you might say, Buddy Baker and Carol Yarbrough. But there is A.J. again trying to move past, and I think he's got him this time. A.J. Foyt moving into third place. Two hard chargers, Jim, both driving very well. A big bunch here, very close. But Petty, in fact, has pulled away. And this is impressive, too, because he's really anxious to close that gap between Buddy Baker and certainly the fastest car at this time in Kale Yarbrough. This is a significant thing for, for Petty to have done to, to break away from this group. 
think I may have said A.J. moved into third. If I did, that's wrong. It's for fourth place here. Remember, it's Buddy Baker, Cale Yarbrough, and Richard Petty up front. And then this group, led by A.J. Foyt now, with Gordon Johncock just behind him. Pete Hamilton is in there, and Cuckoo Marlin, along with some others. And now here's John Cock looking like he might make a move again. He's trying to move high. Both very experienced drivers in all kinds of motor racing, but AJ is one of the old troopers of motor racing in America, one of the finest racing drivers ever to come out of your country, and certainly one of the best in the world. Among other things, the only man in the history of motor, motor racing ever to have won both the Indianapolis 500 and... 24 hours of Le Mans, but look at him racing side by side now with John Cock, and they've traded positions. AJ was down low before, and now, now Gordon is. You couldn't get any closer motor racing than this. This is really in the highway in close quarters at high speed. There's beautiful motor racing, both of them high, going past a slower car, really using the road properly. Now the car is stuck in that group slightly behind, should have a good draft. Very close over the bump there, Jim. That bump really plays a big part in this racetrack. Gordon John Cock gone down. AJ almost crowding him. The other two just waiting. There's got to be a way past in the air, though. That's the problem. Okay, and look who's just getting behind them there. Number 21 is David Peter Pearson, who started back in the pack, but is now moving up. One of the big favorites, Jim. David Pearson has been chosen almost by every driver I've spoken to this morning in the, in the garage area is the man you've got to watch in this race. A lot of experience and a great crew. Well, there he is, making his move oh. past the two of them. Really David clean. Pearson blasting past A.J. Foyt and Gordon Johncock moving into fourth place in the race. And remember, he started way back in the pack because he did not have a particularly fast qualifying speed. He's made a tremendous effort there. This must have something to do with aerodynamics as well because he really has a clean car. That's one of the other things. And this is one of the talents of a great team like the Wood Brothers looking after a car. The car is so clean in the air, Jim. This is one of the important factors in a super speedway such as Daytona. Meanwhile... The leaders are still Buddy Baker and Cale Yarborough. Two very experienced drivers using traffic as best they can. You can be sure that Buddy Baker's using this car in front now to try and break that toe. There they One are. on either side. <laughs> <laughs> that must be kind of an un uncomfortable feeling, I think, to have a two real guys like that blast by on either side of you. A real sandwich. Yeah. We're going to try to get a timing on the leader, Buddy Baker. He has the fastest car in my mind on this racetrack. He's been qualifying fastest, and even uh, before the race itself, they went faster than anybody else. In fact, during practice late last night before the race, the night before the race, Buddy Baker went faster than he had qualified even to get pole position. So here we've got the clock on him now. He's, he's going through the clock. We'll be able to give a speed on him. And at this time, it'll be interesting to see if he can use traffic, if he can use the conditions that he's got today, because it is colder. Therefore, the engines run a little bit faster so we may see some very good times coming from buddy okay watch the clock and we'll convert it to miles per hour for you as soon as this lap is over buddy looking like he might pull away from kale a little bit now too stand by for that time now coming into the start finishing now okay 48.9 seconds and that works out to 184.5, just about exactly. Well, that's a pretty fast time at this time. And now here's David Pearson, who's been moving up in the pack, coming into the pits. Watch these Wood Brothers go into action. The most fabulous man in the world in, in a pit stop, Jim, by far. Fantastic men. You know, they're so good nowadays, they don't even practice anymore. I was speaking to them earlier on the weekend, and they said that they never needed to practice. There's such an understanding between these men. Look at the speed that they do things. Never a wasted motion. Look at that. So David Pearson has been fueled for the first time today and has changed right side tires. Coming into the pits for his first regularly scheduled stop is Buddy Baker, the leader in the race. So the standings will be shuffled here for a little bit. A slow approach. That's good, Jim. Okay, we'll get a timing on this pit stop. Buddy Baker driving the car and wearing the number, number 71, that last year was the property of Bobby Isaac. He's changed teams. And there is Big Buddy, six feet, five inches tall, inside the car. You saw the jolt as they took the jack out, 19.1 seconds. That's very, very fast. Here, here is Pete Hamilton to the pits, and a little bit of a fire there. Yeah, there's a problem there. There's too much, sm too much smoke there just to be rubber smoke, Jim. There's a problem, I'm sure. It's coming from inside the car as well, it would seem. 
Pete, you'll remember, was on the first row at the start, but he's been dropping back through the field in the last few laps. Now you can't even see the car. Back in that smoke is Pete Hamlin's car. There you get a better look at it with the hood open. The smoke stopped. I don't know what that could be. What a, what a pity if it is a major problem. A very, very talented young man who's very dedicated. This is his first year as an owner driver as well. He's running his own organization this year. This is something he's just started. A, a very, very nice young man and terribly fast. They've got the hood down, so that looks encouraging. They're looking... No, there's a little bit of negative play there, too. They're pushing it back, having oh, a look. That looks like it for Pete Hamilton for today. He started on the first row, and in the early going, he is out of the race. And now into the pits comes Cale Yarbrough, who has been the leader since Buddy Baker came into the pits. Let's try to get a timing on him. It was, what was it, 19.1 for, uh, for Buddy. Locking up the rear tires, locking up the rear tires. A little too fast. They're locked up again. Now, this is drum brakes in these cars, most of them all the way around, and there's the clock started again. So we'll see a comparison between the Buddy Baker time and the K.O. Yarbrough time. Very important in this particular race, particularly in a first pit stop. Inside that car is one of the county supervisors of Timmonsville, South Carolina. Kale got elected, and as a Republican, the first guy to do so in his county in more than 100 years. Well, he lost a little time, tw 21 seconds flat, almost two seconds. And look at this, Gordon Johncock came in for his pit stop and he is being pushed away. Some very early attrition in this race. Might tell with, us what will happen later. With some of the front runners, because Gordon Johncock was running very hard with AJ, as you remember. A fast runner, a possible race winner, because a very experienced young man. What a pity. Out on the track, Richard Petty is at least the temporary leader in the race, but he has not made his pit stop yet. Right now, however, we're going to go far up north to Lake Placid, New York, the World Two-Man Bobsled Championships, where your commentator is Frank Gifford. Under cloudy skies, we're back in Daytona again. Jim McKay with Jackie Stewart here, and there is the second-place car of the moment, Richard Petty, the king of the stock car drivers. He is giving chase right now to the new leader in the race, we're going to see him as we move up here. Carol Yarborough in car number 11. Forget about 04. He's a couple of laps behind. This is the leader, number 11, Kale Yarborough. In third place is the car that was the early leader, number 71, Buddy Baker, who sat on the pole. He's third, but he also is quite close. We could have a tight three-car race very soon. Trouble on the home stretch. A big accident. He's holding it into the wall. They're in in the infield as well, but he's holding it into the wall. Number 42. 42 is Marty Robbins, the well-known country and western singer who also is a stock car driver. It looks like everybody may come out of this all right. Also involved is number 95. That's Daryl Waltrip, the promising youngster. And 97, Red Farmer. Red making his getaway on the grass. He'll be used to that across the plowed fields, Jim. But this was a pretty scary accident coming off of four. A major spin. There he's getting back onto the racetrack. We see Marty Robbins' car running down the banking now, in an 18-degree banking at this point, back into the infield. Here's the slow motion. Marty Robbins at the top of the screen. He's really started the accident. He's right against the wall. Now, look, here we go. And the two cars behind him immediately going for the infield. This is NASCAR practice. Experienced drivers really knowing what to do under these circumstances to try and stay away. But, my goodness, Marty Robbins is right into the wall. Very, very hard, Jim. My God, he's running that car out giving the spectators a very close look at a major accident. Boy, he sure is. A good thing that's a cement wall and not a It's not turning upside down. Wire. This is one of the big things about a wall. It keeps the car on the road and it really keeps it stable. There's no car upside down at this time. This is a tremendous part of safety at this particular speedway. Okay, well, there is Marty out of the car. Looks like he's okay. Well, I think Marty's had a big day. I think he'll be singing in a slightly higher note for a couple of days. <laughs> okay. Now all the cars are beginning to pit under the yellow. There's Cale Yarbrough and his number 11 in the pits. Boy, really quick when he's starting to move out. But wait a minute. Now they're, slow, they're stopping him. The word on that is that Cale is out of his place in the line under the yellow. He actually passed the pace car. So they'll just hold him there until his proper place in line, and they'll let him go. The pace car coming off the track at Daytona. Jim McKay here with Jackie Stewart, and they're getting the green flag. They'll be racing again with Buddy Baker, the leader. After the pit stops, and everybody took under the yellow. Cale Yarborough, second. Richard Petty is third. And Bobby Isaac is now fourth. 
significant here. Buddy Weber's going to try and make himself a, a lead again, and he's pulled out almost immediately, Jim. This is uh, a pretty big way that Buddy Baker's done this on two occasions now, on the original start and now after this yellow. Uh, the significance here is, I think, also that Bobby Isaacs come right up in the small block Ford. He's now in third position, which is a pretty good performance this far, and, of course, a very experienced driver. But look at the gap that, I, that Bobby Baker's already got in the rest of this field. Okay, but Cale Yarborough in second place is also moving very well. When they get through this traffic here, we'll get a better idea. Pretty congested area up there right now, and it's more difficult for him to get through than what Baker's doing. He's got an open track ahead of him. He's got a lot of cars to get past in that pack, and, you know, they're not moving over too easily for him. I think Baker could easily take a big advantage here. Buddy Baker has never won the... Daytona 500, but there are the second and third place cars. That's Kelly Arborough in number 11 and Richard Petty in number 43. This is going to be a race right now. Right, but I think, in fact, we're going to see Petty take advantage of Kale here. I'm, I'd be very surprised if Petty doesn't come up at this point and pass Kale because I'm sure Petty has a faster car, a faster shape. And I, can, I think we're going to see something here. I do hope he can get past Kale and see if he can make anything on Buddy Baker out front. But I'm afraid Buddy's got too much of a lead. Again, it's a question of traffic and of course they're both very experienced drivers so uh, there's nobody going to give anything to anybody else. And once again, here in NASCAR, there's a long way to go, and every time the yellow flag comes out, the cars can bunch up again. They're kind of boxed in right there. That was a little bit of a box in for both of them. They were both slowed up by that slower car that's high. Kale's trying to go above them, but there's not a lot of space up there. And it might be interesting to note, as I guess we have before on our telecast of this kind of racing. Look at that, they're right behind. I think Richard actually touched him there. Well, if not, he was very close. Now, I reckon we're going to see Richard make a pass here. It was interesting when we were talking to Richard yesterday that he pointed out that when you're taking advantage of the draft, you have to be very careful because your car gets very light and is very much more difficult to handle. Right. Of course, the closer you stay to the car, the better the draft. And in fact, if you pass on the outside of the racetrack close to the wall, you get the benefit of the wall as well. Now, this draft, Jim, covers right up to the front door. Now, if Richard comes alongside Kale, he's still in the slipstream until he gets to the front door. It's much the same as a wave behind a boat. In other words, you can come right up to the wave starting before you get into the rough water itself. And of course, there's nobody more experienced at this than Richard. So it'll be interesting to see where he chooses. If he chooses to pass him on the high side, it's because of that wall. Look how close he is there. Looks Fantastic. like they're tied together with a piece of string, doesn't it? Unbelievable. Of course, the closer he stays going past also relates to the, to the quiet air. So if he stays close, he's got a better run at the draft. Incidentally, except when they're racing under the yellow, of course, these drivers never take their foot off the floor. That accelerator is all the way down all the time. It's unbelievable that even through the turns in this racetrack, they only lose about, oh, at this speed, about 150 revs from the entrance to the corner to the exit. This is an incredible figure. There's hardly any scrub off speed at all. Now look how high Richard's going there. He's really looking for a way past. This is a clean car he's got. There's lacquer all over his decals. It's a beautifully prepared car. The, the rain gutters are filled in. The doors fit like a, a custom-made car. It's a Savile Row motor car he's got in the biggest possible way. He's really tucked in again. Again, staying higher. It seems to be his level of the track. The very first Daytona 500 was won by Lee Petty, who, of course, is the father of Richard, giving chase there to Cale Yarbrough. Here is the leader, of course, Buddy Baker, out in front all by himself. He has never won this race. Richard has a course and so has Kale. Here. And here they are, battling it out for second. I don't think they've got as big a lead on that, uh, that second place spot with Kale and, uh, and Petty as he had to begin with. I think they're both closing up on them. And of course, they will go faster by the fact that they're both together pushing each other. And this is, a, this is the question of what they're doing just now. How close they are, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now, in fact, <laughs> Petty is pushing Kale Yarbrough along by the air behind the car. Right. In other words, not only does the car behind uh, get the advantage of the draft, but it also helps the one who's pulling. Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very unusual phenomenon, and this is something very special to NASCAR racing. Again, he's staying high, close to the wall. Petty seems to love that wall. He stays very close to it indeed. And, of course, he said to me yesterday that the wall helps him. It, it, it creates a cushion that creates quiet air instead of, of busy air. 
Let's take a relationship between the second and third place car and the leader. Here we go, looking for Buddy Baker. And there he is, and boy, you can see they're really closing in on him now. There they are. This is going to be a three-way fight, and very soon. Richard Betty in car number 43 is trying to take Cale Yarbrough for second place, and he's done it. Petty moving into second, ahead of Yarborough, and behind Buddy Baker. Typical of the kind of racing they have in this NASCAR circuit. Tomorrow, for example, they'll have the Richmond 500 in Mitch Richmond, Virginia. The Southeastern 500 on March 11th in Bristol, Tennessee. The Carolina 500 on March 18th in Rockingham, North Carolina. Great racing right now. Richard Petty. And here's Cale trying to take him again, trying to get back into second place. Richard got a little loose up there, by the way compensated immediately. However, it did cost him second place again because there was Kale moving by. We'll be back here for more of this great racing in the Daytona 500. Right now, the action of the World Two-Man Bobsledding Championships in Lake Placid, New York. Our commentator there in the frozen north is Frank Gifford. The battle goes on in the 1973 Daytona 500. We're into the late stages of the race now, but the situation is still the same. Buddy Baker in car number 71, leading Cale Yarborough in car number 11 by literally the narrowest of margins. Richard Petty is third. He's a good distance behind these leaders, but on the same lap with them and still a threat. Baker in front. Yarborough second, moving through traffic. Fire! Trouble of arms, Frank. Top fire, he's beginning to spin. 49, he's on the way down, he's up towards the wall. He's holding it down. Abs oh, the other car's lost it. He's collecting that it. That's fast, though. That's John Hudson. John Hudson in car number 49 from Bluff City, Tennessee in a 72 Dodge. Well, he held that down beautifully. That could have been a major problem because that set itself off a long way back. And he could certainly have hit the wall. You saw the fire flashing out from underneath his car as he was coming down the home stretch there. A man who kept a cool head in his shoulders at that time, that could have been very nasty. Okay, and well, here's the beginning of it. He catches fire. This is probably oil or dry sump lubrication problem. He's really lit up. He's, it's all behind him. He knows it's there. There he's beginning to weave. He's beginning to weave the problem in oil of that kind. It's, of course, it doesn't go out very easily. And now the point is to try and keep the car down on the banking, and he's succeeded. Down he goes to the infield, the golden rule. But look at this other one. He's really got past, really squeezing past, and there's a very good effort by a driver who really was sitting at his bottom for a good few seconds worrying about what was happening. And there's a fire in Cale Yarborough's car. It's setting underneath. Under here. It's yep. beginning to smoke. There Let's he goes. Oh. End of the day for Carol Yarborough, entering the closing stages of the Daytona 500 in his comeback here in NASCAR. It looks like he is at it. There goes Richard Petty flashing by him, and that was the most significant moment you saw there. Petty moving into second place in the race, still a good distance behind Buddy Baker, but with a yellow, he could catch up, and we may have a yellow here. We do have a yellow, in fact. The yellow is out now. We'll be back at Daytona in another minute. The race goes on in the Daytona 500 between Buddy Baker, car number 71, and Richard Petty, car number 43. Richard, looking as if he might set up for the lead. When will he make that big attempt? Chris Akatamaki is down in the pits with Cale Yarborough. Let's go down there now. You look sad, Cale. Have you ever had a heartbreaker like this one? Well, yes, I've had some pretty tough ones, uh, Chris, but everything was going so good. The car was running real good, and I was just waiting till the end, and uh, she let go. What let go? Well, the engine let go on the caution. We came by. I thought we needed a little oil. The oil pressure began to fluctuate just a little bit, and when I backed out of it for the caution flag, uh, I felt it tighten up, and she just let go. Cale, do you think you could have outrun Buddy for the flag? Well, Chris, Buddy's running real good, but it depending. I, I, I'd really love to know because uh, my car was running good. I could I could pick the right spot and I could pass him when I wanted to, and I think it it have been close. I'll tell you, I'd have made a I'd have made a good run for it, I believe. Okay, well that's one question that certainly will never be answered, however, because Cale Yarbrough is out of it for this time. A real tough break for him. Here is that battle for the lead with Petty perhaps 
going to take it this time. He's taking a big move. He's got the crowd on their feet. They're cheering, they're stamping, they're waving. He's gone past. And this is the first time, really, that Buddy Baker's been passed properly today, apart from being in the pits. So Richard Petty has taken the lead. He waited a long, long time to the closing stages of this race. But now he's got it. Can he keep it? There's one more pit stop, Jim, and that's going to be a very important one in this race. Richard Petty, old hat experience, King Richard himself. But Buddy Baker's still got a very fast motor car around him, and I don't think the race is over. Looks like the whole story will be in that final pit stop, which in all probability will just be for fuel. It'll be a very quick one. The crowd literally on its feet here. I guess you can't hear them, but they are screaming. 103,000 of them. Largest crowd ever to see a sporting event in the state of Florida. Buddy Baker in the draft of Richard Petty. Is there any chance that Buddy let him go by, do you think, Jackie? No, I don't think so. I think at this time, uh, Buddy is just wanting to be sure, but he's gone past oh. again. Fantastic. Again, Buddy Baker shows the superiority that he's got at this time, and I'm still a little bit suspicious that that Buddy Baker car has the legs of even Richard Petty at this late date in the race. Boy, you can bet there are a few words going on among those two pit crews right now. The opportunity of a lifetime, really, for a pit crew to win the biggest race in stock car racing. You're seeing the maturity of a young man showing through before it's time, I think, in Buddy Baker, because, my goodness, under this sort of man, you see a performance that is not normal because Richard Petty has just done it so many times before. Just total tension here at Daytona because there is no way of predicting what's going to happen here. This is anybody's race. It's one of two people at least because, my goodness, they've outshone everybody else at this time. They must be doing a lot of wondering in those two race cars right now. Too, right, about what but the other fellow's thinking. Absolutely, but there again, Buddy Baker's opened up a bit of a space again. That's pretty impressive motoring again. Perhaps Buddy Baker's the man with the mental computer at this time, Jim. But again, the pit stop coming, and the Petty crew is certainly one of the two or three best in the sport. Well, and of course, you've got this head-to-head -head situation because Harry Hyde is no amateur either. You're going to right. see the best of motor racing, both in driving and the, and the motor car itself, and of course, that very important third factor, the pits. The pit sign is going to be given to Buddy Baker. Yep, Harry Hyde just gave it to him. Don't know about Richard yet. Here comes Betty in the Here's Betty coming into the pits. And he's locked it all up. He's locked the brakes up. He's going to have to have a wheel change. It's not just a... I'm sure it's not just a fuel stop now because sure he's flatted these tires in some way. Okay, Richard already into the pits. We're timing the stop. Now Buddy will be coming in when he finishes this next lap. He's not, in fact, changing that tire, so sure as hell he's going to have a vibration. 8.9 seconds. It was just a fuel stop, that's all. That's why it was that fast. We'll see what Buddy Baker does when he comes in. Petty has the lead now. Here's Buddy. He should be coming in on this lap. The that was the sign they gave him from the pit. Harry Hyde standing out there, kind of jiggling from one leg to the, to the next. His men ready to leap over that pit wall to try to beat 8.9 seconds, to try to give him the lead with just a few laps to go. And here he comes. Elsie Wiley Baker Jr. Clock will start as soon as those wheels stop. There it is. There it is. No uh, tires again, just fuel in the windscreen. There's the quickest gas station Incredible. stop you've ever seen. Two tenths of a second faster than Richard Betty, and that could be the difference. Let's see if it is. Remember, uh, it also makes a difference how quickly they decelerated and accelerated so that that does not automatically give them the lead. Petty uh, has got the lead. Even though Buddy Baker had two tenths of a second faster pit stop, Richard has held on to the lead. We'll be back for the finish in a minute. 
Now back to the racing, because each of the two lead cars has made a final quick pit stop just for fuel, and Richard Petty has the lead. Richard Petty being chased by Buddy Baker, and this should be the battle to the checkered flag. There's Richard, out after his fourth Daytona 500 victory, remember. He's the only man who's ever won three. But Buddy has had the faster car all afternoon. He could catch him. Buddy Baker's engine looks like it's going south or some problem. Smoke streaming out the back. Buddy Baker, with such a few number of laps left to go, is out of it. What a disappointment, Jim. I think a young driver who's driven so well through the entire day to have this happen so close to the end, almost just six laps from the end. What a disappointment. He's driven a cool race. He's driven a very fast race. He's set the pace. What a sad day. There is very little question then that Richard Petty is going to win his fourth Daytona 500, an unprecedented feat. Meanwhile, Richard Petty now has two laps on the second place car, which is Bobby Isaac. Dick Brooks is in third place, and guess who's fourth? A.J. Foyt, who was the defending champion here. Okay, now let's go down to the pits to Chris Economaki with Buddy Baker. I think we all feel the same way you do. Have you ever had a lower moment in racing? Well, Chris, I, uh, I tell you, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I've ever been as disappointed because I saw Richard ahead of me and he was a quarter of a mile ahead, then he was 300 feet. We were just coming almost a second a lap faster than he was and I was looking at the distance and it, it was just, uh, if the engine had stayed together, I'd have caught him in three more laps and it would have been a good race to finish. But uh, I really believe our car would have beat him today. It was just a faster automobile, but that don't count in automobile racing. Buddy, if you hadn't had to push it so hard after that last pit stop, do you think it might have held together? Well, <laughs> I never turned the engine too much or anything. I ran it wide open after I come back out, but uh, it just wasn't in the books to finish today. Tough break for Buddy Baker, but a good one, of course, for somebody else. It's always the case, and here comes Richard Petty. He should get the white flag this time, meaning that the leader has one more lap to go to victory. There it is, one to go. What a race for a man who's waited a long time to do this, but he's, he hasn't waited as long as a lot of people have, and in this time he's won more races than perhaps anybody else, and he's certainly won more money than anybody else in this trail. Uh, a very talented young man, a great ambassador, in fact, for the sport, and somebody who, of course, has made a success out of this Southern Trail, this NASCAR Trail. Certainly has Richard Petty, who altogether has won some $1,300,000 on the NASCAR Trail, $227,000 of it last season in 1972, when he won his fourth Grand National Championship. Headed for the checkered flag. Down in front of the crowd now, they're on their feet and cheering and waving. This is Petty Country again today. The checkered flag is out, and Richard Petty has won the Daytona 500. Wonderful performance. Look at the crowd go mad. They're waving and they're very pleased. Second place to Bobby Isaac. Third place to Dick Brooks. Fourth place to A.J. Foyt. And fifth place will go to Buddy Baker. We'll be back in a minute with a final word. Congratulations, Richard. Four wins. Uh, no one else has won more than one in the 15th annual Daytona 500. Was it an easy day for you? Well, really, uh, it was probably pretty easy. I couldn't run with uh, Keel and, and Buddy right at the first of the race, but as the race progressed, I think I got a little bit slower and I might have picked up a little bit. And at last, I could run with them, but I still couldn't outrun them. And then uh, both them had trouble and I was on quick. If Buddy had been able to stay in, who do you think would have gotten the flag? Well, it's really hard to say. I think he had the quicker car, but I just don't know how much quicker he was, whether he could have caught up with me. Richard, I noticed before you got out of the car, you took a pill. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I just, uh, all this racket and stuff, and I guess maybe excitement, if nothing else, always gives me a headache. And I just take a couple of pills, and then I'm okay. okay Aspers Richard, are not really pills. <laughs> okay, congratulations on your unprecedented fourth Daytona 500 victory. A champion, and now back to Jim McKay. And there is Richard being embraced by the only car owner who always beats the beauty queen to the driver, Andy Granatelli.
And so Richard Petty has, in fact, won his fourth Daytona 500, an unprecedented performance, not only here, but in any major 500-mile race. Really something. Tremendous performance. One, one would expect somehow from a great professional, but a disappointment for Buddy Baker. I must say that he looked to me as if he was going to win this major motor race. As our new resident expert in the sport of motor racing, you're a long way from home, but, but I ha have a suspicion you had a pleasant afternoon. I think one of the most pleasant experiences I've had in motor racing, Jim. It's a great pleasure to work with ABC, who cover it so well, and certainly for me a big thrill to work with everyone. I'm looking forward to coming back. Okay, Jackie Stewart, our pleasure to have you with us. That's the story in 1973 on the Daytona 500.